Okay, so welcome back. I uh, hope you had a nice break and you've managed to chat and have a look at some of the stuff that we're showing today. Um, my name is Eleanor Cooper and um, I'm part of the BL Labs team. I joined the Labs team almost exactly a year ago to the day. So I came to the symposium last year and sat where you are and watched what I was about to have to do. Um, before that, I was a curator for Mongolian and Manchu for three years here at the BL as well. So in this session, we've got a 10-minute and then a 20-minute presentation, followed by some closing remarks by Adam. So it's my pleasure to introduce this afternoon's speakers who will talk about data and the visual and experiential in complementary ways. So talk, um, our first speaker is the visual artist and researcher Michael Takio Magruder. Michael works with real-time data, digital archives, immersive environments, mobile devices, and virtual worlds. He was the winner of last year's Artistic Award and has been working with the British Library Labs for around two years now um, and on, on a forthcoming exhibition called Imaginary Cities. And by the time that shows next spring, he'll have been working for about three years with the team. So. And he's going to give us a preview of that work now. So, thank you. Please welcome Michael Tecchio. Thanks, Eleanor, and thanks also to Mahendra and Adam for organizing today. Uh, can we switch over to my laptop system, please? There we go. Okay, so just to start off, to give you a little bit of context about myself, I work with computational systems, networks, code, in the production of the work, but then the final results, I'm a visual artist, so often it ends up in the gallery. So things that you could actually see is very you know, traditional contemporary fine art exhibition here. And here are some of the things that I've done over the years. Um, and one thing that I'm really interested in, in doing is actually taking the sort of the digital processes, the digital tools, and also the issues that are kind of emerging in this particular time period and framing those within a visual art experience. And in that sort of process, I'm always thinking about the individuals that come and see the show. Because as I'm sort of developing these collaborations and producing these exhibitions, you know, I do very much think about, you know, educating in some way the public about sort of the new creative possibilities and also, you know, the social challenges of our time in this particular digital age. So when I was invited a number of years ago by Mahendra and the lab's team to think about a project, you know, of using the BL's collections in data, um, I, I looked carefully and, and I came up with this idea for a project which has now become known as Imaginary Cities, where what I wanted to do was look at the maps archive, um, these historic maps from sort of you know, the 19th and early 20th century and think, okay, if I can use that digital material and all the sort of surrounding scholarship and metadata, you know, could I actually use that as the, the, the seed, if you will, to then generate these fantastical cityscapes and, and map environments of things that, you know, never have existed, never will exist, except in our artistic context. So for the collection, I decided to, of course, you know, being someone who likes uh, open and accessible data, I was drawn to the one million images of Scan Books collection on Flickr, where, of course, as you start to kind of drill down and get to know about that collection, you can, you can do searches, you know, and the first process of working with labs on a residency was, was kind of exploring this archive. So how could I actually take this one million and start drilling down looking at p picking out high quality maps from that, then saying, okay, how about city maps, urban environments, like in here, in this case, it's London. Um, and then going from there and then thinking about how I could use not only the image data to generate the artworks and the experiences, but also the metadata, as you can see there, you have things on Flickr like view counts, favorites, you know, um, you have tags which also can be used and change over time. So this notion that the archive, when it's a digital archive, it's, it's really a living archive. You know, this is changing all the time. Um, everyone in the world can access this. And this, this from an artistic standpoint, became very interesting to me. So during that residency, 
you know, I, I work through a process of developing various sort of 2D computational sort of remixes, rehashes of that, that material, you know, using not only the image data, but also the metadata as well, 3D environments. And then another thing that I really wanted to do was to take it back to the, these kind of analog physical forms. Because of course, the maps from these guidebooks, it ended up that it was, it was guidebooks that these maps came from. You know, they were, they were based off of, I found working with uh, scholars here at the, the BL, that the guidebook maps from those 19th, 20th century books were based on copies of really large sort of one-off maps. That was the process. So I wanted to kind of embrace that and kind of track the history of from the one-off, the special, which then goes into the mechanical reproduction, mass, mass production in the books. Then it gets sort of digitized. It gets uploaded online you know, into this digital collection. And then I wanted to take those resources and not only transform them digitally, but then bring them back into a physical manifestation, something that returned to the kind of one-off, special, precious fine art object, whether it's through prints, 3D prints, 2D prints, or even doing processes like gold gilding. So what I'm going to show now is just kind of uh, the exhibition is going to launch in the main um, sort of public space in the entrance hall exhibition space in April of next year. And Mahindra asked me to give you a preview today. So I, I, I don't normally do this for shows because as an artist, it's kind of like, okay, the show gets put up, go experience it. And, and that's kind of my definitive word on the matter. So, so this is very experimental. Um, right now, you, you get to kind of see behind the scenes. So here's the plan where I've decided to transform this space. Um, usually, it's very full with tons of information. But I'm taking it to a very kind of a white wall clinical space and really kind of trying to make things that I'm going to bring into the space very precious. There's going to be four major artwork installations. The first is going to be a series of Alg algorithmically processed, sort of generated these map images to create these fantastical maps. I researched a process to do gold and silver gilding, so it'll be 24 karat gold onto you know, the, the best sort of art materials you can buy, and those will be sort of framed there. Uh, another thing is going to be a real-time virtual world, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's actually a, a living cityscape, if you will, a 3D cityscape that is being generated from those maps. And that's going to exist as this sort of immersive projection, but also an experience in an Oculus Rift headset. And then sort of playing with the notion of painting, there's going to be a three screen sort of algorithmic, always changing sort of painterly expanse, again, sort of based off the map images. And then the final piece is going to be a series of physical sculptural objects there, sort of plinth-based, using either 3D printing or perhaps laser etching. I'm sort of developing and doing the final dev stages of those. And then the final thing, which I wanted to put in the exhibition, was really important to me, uh, was to showcase the collection, not only in the digital form, which I use, but also the physical form. Because for me, in this day and age, they're kind of the same. You know, a library is this sort of repository of creativity. And that creativity now is stored both analog and digital forms. So I wanted to bring that in. You know, because for me, you know, showing those maps, the physical maps, the source materials, that's, that's really kind of an important conceptual part of the story. And it's something that, you know, I think also will help communicate to the visitors in the exhibition you know, the, the nature of what these things are, where they come from, and where we might go with them in the future. So some of the works that I'm sort of doing right now and, and finishing up, um, for the 2D generated images, I'm working with a colleague in the States, a software architect, David Steele, and what we're doing is we're, we're tying into Flickr in real time and sort of, because what I wanted to do artistically was create these images that would every day change. So every day you get this sort of unique manifestation that's coming through. So as we sort of, and you can see the changes, you know. Um, and, and they're based on the progression of time, but also as people are interacting 
with the images online. Those interactions feed into the system and you actually do get changes to the images. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm taking for the 3D experience, which I'll show you a live demo now, those images produced by David's server application are then getting linked to by a Unity 3D application, and this is going to produce the real-time city environment. So if I come out of here, so we've shown, seen video today, but, but here we're going to actually have a live 3D environment, hopefully, where I'll show you some of the, the work in progress that I'm doing with Drew. Okay, so here's a map that's based on London, that, that is, a, it's, a, it's a 18th, um, 19th, it's, this one's a 19th century map of London. So what we have here is the source material is a 19th century map from London, of London, that was scanned and uploaded to this collection. Um, the server application has captured that map and the metadata, and every day, like I said, it's producing this new algorithmic image, which you can see here in the background. Now, because the aesthetic that I've used is this Mandela, what is happening now is that right here, the image is being divided into this grid structure. The bitmap is being read. It is then replicated out there. And then, if we go in, now we're in the city. Now this is not the final version. This is where, you know, we're still, this is very, this is I think like dev version 20. So the aesthetics are still being worked on, but we're doing things like putting in the environment and working on textures and other sort of things. But this can give you a sense kind of what I've been talking about. And, and like I said, the, um, the source material for this is, is two things. It is that, that map that is there on, on Flickr, because it's getting accessed in real time. And it's, of course, the interactions of people up to this date and, of course, into the future. So as those things change, this city will change. Every day, the city will be unique based on that map. Okay. And I think we'll, we'll stop there. Thank you.